Even if you've been introduced to the basics of copyright before, it's always a good idea to have a refresher to make sure we're all starting from the same page. It can also be quite reassuring with a complex topic like copyright to realise that you know more than you think you do. Copyright is an automatic right which is granted once a work has been produced in a fixed form. You don't need to formally register for copyright or pay a fee to any third party companies to do this on your behalf. The work to be copyrighted should be original and produced in one of the forms seen on the screen which cover most types of creative output, although the most directly applicable to researchers is likely to be literary. It's important to remember that copyright doesn't protect ideas but the expression of those ideas. As soon as something has been written down, drawn or performed, it becomes covered by copyright automatically. Copyright itself is part of a larger suite of rights known as intellectual property rights, and these include things like trademarks and patents. Copyright can be broadly divided into two strands, economic rights and moral rights. Your economic right as a content creator is your right to make money from your work, including the right to copy, lend or reproduce elements of that work. You can sell these economic rights or give them away to another person or entity, and this is usually done by signing a publication agreement with a journal or book publisher. In contrast, you always retain your moral rights, whether you give away your economic rights or not. Your moral rights include the right to always be identified as the creator and to prevent any derogatory treatment of you or your work. These rights are essentially there to protect your reputation and the integrity of your work. Copyright is often described as being a bit like an onion. It contains a lot of layers and it often makes you cry. However, all joking aside, it's important to think about the different layers in any one copyright item as this can impact what you're allowed to use it for. Each item has different layers of copyright in its many elements. So for example, a book will contain copyright in the text, any illustrations or graphs, the cover image, and even the topography. In a similar way, a DVD will have rights in the film content, the cover image, the soundtrack and performance rights for the artist. Each of these layers is a different type of material and as a result it's subject to a different copyright duration. For example, life plus 70 years for the author of the text, 50 years from the original showing of a broadcast work and 25 years for the topography and layout. Each of these rights might belong to different people even if they seem similar. When you look at a book, you might find that the copyright holder of the cover art is not the same as the person who holds the rights to the general illustrations, and both of these people might be separate to the publisher. All of these factors combine to make copyright feel a bit overwhelming at times. However, it's really important to remember that copyright is there to protect the creators of work and offers a level of reward and recognition. This helps to encourage creativity while still offering a level of protection for creators, especially when it comes to their moral rights. For researchers based in Cambridge, there's an added level of complexity when it comes to copyright. Unlike many other institutions, they usually retain the intellectual property in the works they produce, meaning that they have an extra level of responsibility over how they use these rights. There are some exceptions to this, such as research sponsored by commercial companies and materials produced for some institutional purposes. If in doubt, check the terms of your grant or contract for more information.